Smack dab in the center of Louisiana is one of the most well-maintained zoos I've ever been to. Opened in 1926, it has a different wing for every continent. I ended up spending half a day here. It's Alexandria Zoological Park. Um, this place is gorgeous and they have a train that goes through the entire thing. But here we have a koi pond, we have palm trees. A tamarind den, but where are the monkeys? Show me the monkeys. I guess the monkeys sleep during the day. I don't know. They're not out and about. But this koi pond kind of wraps around for quite a ways. And there we go. There's a monkey. He's on the freaking island. Oh my god. All right, I was glad to see the monkey. That makes me feel a little better. Here we're getting towards a bear den. Looks to be a black bear. This is the habitat they built for the bear. He gets his own waterfall so he can cool off with a little pool. There's a den behind the waterfall that he must be inside right now. There's a bunch of bamboo behind the bear den. I wonder if he goes behind here and chews it or they grow it for them to eat. I'm not sure. We're getting to the aviary part. So I got the aviary feed stick. Looks like a toothbrush with coriander on it. Here you go, birdie. You want some? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Num num. What is this guy? A, a budgie? A cockatiel? And I think we're about to get some competition. I see another fella creeping up. Maybe I'll give him a little bite. You want some, buddy? You want some, buddy? All right, this fella's standing right on my hand. How cute is that? Okay, that was a lot of fun. For two bucks, you can buy these avian feed sticks and feed it to the cockatiels or parakeets or whatever those things are. They freaked out some little kid though there. They're kind of scared. They jump right up on you. Okay, whenever I think of a kookaburra, I think of that Men at Work song. I would love to hear him sing. I think most or all of the animals here are rescue animals, which makes me feel a little less bad. But seeing a bird in an enclosure like that where I can't really fly around makes me a little sad. It makes me wonder if that's why they're not singing their songs or coming out and doing their animal thing. Oh well, it's not about my entertainment, right folks? It's about helping the animals out. Well, here we go. I see a cardboard cut out of a crocodile right here. And here we go. Here's the, oh, well, I think that's an alligator. Actually, I'm not really sure. Nope, I was right the first time. Nile the crocodile. Whenever I've seen alligators or crocodiles in, in zoos or in the wild, they're always just chilling, just basking in the sun. Look like they're barely there. It's hard to think of them as being an apex predator because they're just kind of spaced out 99.9% .9 of the time. I'm at yet another bamboo forest. There's a sculpture of an elephant. Do they have elephants here? Oh my God, I gotta see that. They clearly host a lot of activities here. I mean, it's obviously used for like school field trips and stuff, but they have a reception center and like a booth down here with picnic tables. A little park that looks like they do with some sort of Halloween walk thing. But I just walked through the Garden of Edith. Now I'm going through the Africa exhibit, which has these gorgeous big i don't know if they're oak or elm or some kind of tree right here or bilbao i guess it's some african tree great shade right here this um this might be my favorite part of the zoo so far the africa exhibit now check out this gorgeous enclosure a good 20 foot waterfall right there and what do we have right there this is my favorite zoo i've ever been to not only are the animals cool just the landscaping is gorgeous. There's a railroad right here you can take. Beautiful uh, canopy. That waterfall has got to be like 20 feet. I mean, that's no insignificant thing. And this appears to be all like mortar. I thought it might be plastic. Nope, they use actual rock for their sculptures around here. There's a great enclosure right here, a glass barrier where you can get up and see the lions without having to look through the chain link fence. Unfortunately, I only saw that one female and she went in her little den right now. So I guess I'm not gonna get to talk to them. 
and I spoke too soon. Here she is right here. Hey girl, you gonna go in the little in the little glass thing? You gonna talk to me? There you are. Hey, hey. And there's the boyfriend. She just went over and woke him up. How cute was that? He seems a little pissed. He's about to roar. He's like, why did you get me up? I was having a great time under my banana tree. Further down from the line enclosure, still in the Africa exhibit, they appear to have tortoises. I don't think they have tortoises like this in Africa. These guys are fairly big. There's flamingos in there too. I think you can see them. Out of all the animal exhibits, this one enclosure right here, the tortoises and the flamingos, gets by far their own most cozy space. They have a ton of real estate in there. Another thing I like about this zoo, they have all these little maintenance stations, you know, for animal feed or whatever, cleaning up the grounds. And they're all sculpted in whatever the theme of the exhibit is. This is the Africa side. Anyway, I think I'm exiting the African safari area. I want to go see that tiger that they have that was not in the Africa part and the cassowary and the whole Australia stuff I missed. They even made a little tiki bar for the porcupine. He gets his own pool. Man, this is nicer than some people's apartments in Boston. It's ridiculous how beautiful peacocks are. Like of all the animals in the animal kingdom, these guys are just spectacular. Okay, so I figured out, I think I figured out that I stumbled into the Asia enclosure which I completely missed before and which is apparently huge. This here is the lowland and Noah. So they've got some kind of Asian ungulate over there and there's a peacock in his place too. I wonder if the peacocks just kind of like hop the fence and go wherever they want to go. I mean, I'm assuming they can't fly, but they can still hop, right? We're coming up on the gibbon deck. Okay, so what I know about gibbons is they just love to mess with people. Yeah, those monkeys that they train to like pickpocket from you and like steal from you on the Strait of Gibraltar and stuff. I love those guys. I think they're awesome. It makes me proud to be like of the same species, you know, primate. It's interesting, all these Asia enclosures. The animals get a ton of space. Like on average, the enclosures are five times the size of the other ones. Something up here is honking up a storm. Let's see what this is. So I think this was the guy honking up a storm a second ago, because he's the only bird in this enclosure. There's ambient animal noises just kind of like coming from all directions here. It's a little disorienting, but supposedly right over here, there's a cheetah or a jaguar. Let's see if I can find them. So it definitely was that bird doing the honking, but I think I found our little cheetah friend in here. I'll turn the camera around. Can you guys see him under that table right there? He's got a decent enclosure, I have to say. Looks like he can climb to about 20, 25 feet. Some stuff to do, but he just wants some shade and some safe space. Here's a little ditty. Jack and Diane are these two cougars in this enclosure right here. I can see one of them straight ahead. So yeah, they've got lions, tigers, cougars, um, cheetahs, and ocelots here. That's a lot of cats. Not sure where I am right now. I've been here for like a solid hour and a half, maybe more already. Um, the zoo's pretty expansive and I still haven't seen that Australia exhibit. I think that might be the only one left I haven't seen. Unless there's a South America and an Antarctica exhibit. I haven't seen those. Another huge banquet space in here. They actually have a stage. So that brings up an interesting point. Interesting places to do weird things. I don't think I've ever been to a wedding in a zoo. I guess none of my friends are cool enough. I've never had a wedding of my own. Have any of you guys ever done a wedding in a zoo? I think that would be cool. I would love to see a, a heavy metal concert here too. 
I guess the bigger discussion I'm trying to get to is that life is supposed to be interesting. You're supposed to be constantly doing new and weird and beautiful things all the time. I guess for me, part of the reason I'm trying to move into a van and kind of reorient my life towards this sort of dwelling lifestyle, just wandering around, I need something new and stimulating and I feel like I touched bottom with every other thing I've done in my life. I've done every scene, you name it, I've done it. I just need like a radical change. I think stopping at the zoo today in Alexandria, this gorgeous landscape zoo, is the single best decision I've so far made in this past three or four weeks of being on the road. They also have pretzels. They also have pretzels here, folks. I cannot find pretzels in Louisiana at all at a gas station, at a grocery store, or bagels. I went to Starbucks today. Starbucks normally has bagels. They have no bagels. Yeah, so pretzels, bagels, hard to find, but I'm finding both of them. And Diet Coke right here in the zoo, in the middle of the freaking, I don't know, Asia exhibit or something. I don't know where I am. I'm kind of disoriented right now, but I absolutely love this place. The Alexandria Zoo in Alexandria, Louisiana. Pretzels were great, but there's like a whole continent I missed. Right here, we look, looks like we have what they call a meerkat, I think. This says it's called a, a Terra. Looks like a meerkat. I said beer, meerkat, it might be more like a fisher cat or a wolverine. He definitely looks carnivorous. I'm coming up on something. Oh, the Australia exhibit, finally found it. Yeah, I don't know, folks, but I'm dying to see that kangaroo. I've been hyping it up in my mind for a while now. Kangaroos are another animal you do not want to fuck with. And I've seen them, like, disembowel other kangaroos. Kangaroos, they also get you in a headlock and fucking drown you. They're psycho animals. I think I see one for the first time over here, though I think that might be a wallaby. That is definitely a wallaby because they kind of walk on all fours for the most part and hunch over more. And over here are a couple other animals I've been waiting to see. I'm pretty sure that's the kangaroo. I think that is the cassowary, but you can't really get close to them unless you took that train. The train cuts right through the middle of this park. It clearly takes you where the footpath does not. Yeah, man, I want to come back here and do that train. Another turtle over here in the Australia exhibit, the snakehead turtle. Okay, so that does really look like a snake. I can see that sticking out of a pile of leaves and freaking you out. All right, so I'm glad we take the Australia checkbox off, even though I would, I might go back and try to shoot more of that cassowary later and the kangaroo. I kind of want to get them standing up and I'll come back to there. But now I want to see the Louisiana exhibit over here of native species i wonder if it's just like an empty like part of the park you know they just kind of open you up to the parking lot and say here you go but no i'm sure they did something nicer than that even the path here i gotta say after spending a week in texas it's nice to be in a lush green forest again texas is just so dry some wild boars here yeah, I'm still not sure. I know there are boars in the American Southeast. I'm just not sure if these are them. I thought ours were a little browner than that. Okay, yeah, this is definitely not the Louisiana exhibit. Those are not Louisiana hogs. Anyway, still trying to find that Louisiana exhibit. As for Texas, yeah, it's, it's hot, it's flat. The forests are weird there, man. Uh, yeah, there's green space and forest and stuff, but it's like two types of trees, like cedar and oak, and that's basically it. There's not much diversity. I'm not sure I could really get used to that if I moved to that part of the country. I love my Appalachia, you know? This definitely isn't Appalachia. It's more bamboo. I wonder if they planted the bamboo here or it just grows. I finally found the Louisiana exhibit. Oh man, I just wandered around for like a half hour, guys. I didn't even film it. Yeah, this looks very lush, very green. Much different from the other exhibits in the park. So you enter into the Louisiana wetlands enclosure, which is quite substantial. 
And it smells different here too, it smells good. Okay, this is an actual shrimp boat that they converted, kind of welded back together. They have like a little TV screen in here, you can watch a movie, learn a little bit of history. But here's the best part right here, this is not a window, you can reach in. There's some beautiful birds over here. That looks like a great blue heron. You can tell he's a rescue because he's got a cast on his leg. And a good old Louisiana gator. Yeah, they're so slow and cute looking, but they're so dangerous. Oh, they even have a little cemetery, even though it's a fake cemetery. Oh, that means so much to me. I love cemeteries. My whole channel was originally just going to be about cemeteries. I might still hit a few. This is kind of getting me in the mood to do that again. Interesting in the path here. All the granite they used has like seashells mixed into it. Okay, so the Louisiana exhibit's basically like a double S type shape. It's a loop. You walk the whole thing and then you exit the way you came in. Unlike the other exhibits here where you can kind of pass through and shortcut to other places. I love getting lost. I love wandering. And then finding your way back, you know, that's, that's what I'm all about. But now I am super lost. I, I think I should probably be heading back towards the entrance. But I do not want to bust out that map. I'm just having too much fun. So I thought I was exiting the park, but I just walked back in a huge freaking circle. I'm back at the Louisiana exhibit. Folks, I don't know how to get out of here. The sign doesn't even really tell you where the exit is. <laughs> it's like they don't want you to leave. Well, they have capybaras in here. That's kind of cool. The world's largest rodent. Except I couldn't get my camera to not focus on the chain link fence. Holy crap, I completely missed the path I'm on before, but they have a condor in here. And there is one more exhibit I completely walked by when I came in the first time. The land of the jaguar. I guess he's like the centerpiece here. He has a massive gate. And I zoom out, you can see what a beautiful park he gets. There's no ceiling. All right, he seems kind of perturbed. And there's also no ceilings here, so he could potentially climb out. I'm wondering if I should be afraid for my life. So I figured out what he keeps staring at. Over here, there's a taper, a giant thing that just kind of stood up. There he is moving around. He's moving around. I'm gonna zoom out. You see how the, the jaguar just keeps staring him down, pacing back and forth, staring at it. He wants to hunt and kill it. He wants to kill it giant anteater over here. Anteaters are another weird animal. They can walk in two feet like a human. Yup, so I'm glad I got lost because I missed that whole path before. Anyway, I finally figured out where the exit is, folks. It's right up here. I'm gonna get back in my car because tomorrow I wanna get to Huntsville, Alabama to see the Warner Von Braun Space Center up there. That's still like a seven hour drive from here, maybe even longer than that. So I'm gonna drive until I run out of gas, until it gets dark tonight, which will be like another six or seven hours. I'll get as close to Huntsville as I can, but for now, I'm gonna quit yapping, call it a day, say bon voyage to all you guys. This is the Alexandria Zoo, Alexandria, Louisiana. Best zoo I've ever been to, check it out.